Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Friday. It is May the 12th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And even in a book like the book of Joel, where it is absolutely obvious, obvious that there is much devastation and famine and drought, and, uh, and, and every heart is just languishing in the misery of the moment, we can be encouraged by that because that is God encouraging us to recognize the seriousness of our sin and of our rebellion against him. And his desire in doing that is not to destroy us, but to wake us up, to bring us to, um, to a place where we realize that the only way we're going to find the help that we need is when we turn to him. And so you've seen it in chapter 1 through 1 through 13, where it's just been this horrible story of of, of drought and destruction and the locust and how it's just stripped the land of everything that is good, wholesome, and nourishing, and there's nothing left, um, and, and there's no way to escape the misery that they're in. And then in verse 14, we left off with this plea, this call from God, because remember, this is God uh, speaking the word of the Lord through Joel. So the word of the Lord that came to Joel. So it's God speaking to us, just like it was God speaking to them. When you see the land and destruction and devastation like it's in, when you when you see that everything good is being stripped away, when there's no refreshment, when there's no water, what do you do? What do you do in that day? And so he encourages us here, sanctify ye a fast. And a fast is a time in which you seriously lay aside the stuff of this world and seek the face of God. And you can fast in many different ways, uh, but certainly here he gives specific instructions on how that fast ought to look. But a fast at any point in time uh, can, can, can be you um, letting go of something in this world to spend that time that you normally would be indulging in the flesh in that moment to, to seek the face of God seriously and to let him know that you truly truly hurt for with him over the things that's going on uh, and, and the rebellion of mankind against him. But uh, how about our own souls in rebellion against him? And so he says, sanctify ye a fast and call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. And so God wants us to come to him. God wants us to cry out to him. God wants to save us. But he says, first, you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to turn away from the senseless, vain things of this world that you've been looking for your help in and turn to the only one who can bring that hope and help, and that is the Lord God. Because he says, the reason you ought to call out to me is this, alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. <laughs> we can look around and we can see that God has turned this country over uh, to itself and we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And um, we can't even get the churches to agree on the Lord Jesus Christ, much less come together and pray and repent. And what did Jesus come and die for? But for our sin. And so it's not that he's shunning us away. He, he knows our sin and he wants to forgive our sin and to renew and revive and make us alive in him that's his desire for alas the day the day of the lord is at hand and as a destruction from the almighty it shall come destruction is going to come unless we turn unless we run to the lord we're in trouble is not the meat cut off before your eyes yea joy and gladness from the house of our god look around the world is in utter languish. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan and the herds of the cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture? Yea, the flocks of the sheep are made desolate. O oh Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire have devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burnt all the trees of the field. So there's this horrible drought that's also 
taking place at the same time that all of this physical devastation is going on. And he says, oh, oh Lord, he says, the beasts of the field cry unto thee, for the rivers of water are dried up, and the fire have devoured the pastures of the wilderness. And he says, there is no hope, there's nowhere to turn. We need you, O oh Lord. And that ought to be God encouraging us today as we see what's going on around us, that we would recognize that God is our only hope and unless we all come together. Notice when we started this, he says, sanctify ye fast, call a solemn assembly and gather the elders and all the inhabitants unto the land and to the house of God. And our problem is, is that there's not a, there's, it's not that there's not but a few, you know, there's, there are a few who are, Praying, I believe with all my heart, like me. I'm, I'm, I'm not that I'm saying anything about me, but I am praying that we would recognize our sin, that we recognize that we need to repent before a holy God as a nation. But the nation itself is not coming together. All the inhabitants of the land are not coming into the house of God, and recognizing, and so we're in trouble. But there is a way. We'll see. In chapter two, as it picks up. And he leads this for us to do. First of all, we're to sanctify fast and call a solemn assembly. But then he says, blow the trumpet. We got to start blowing the trumpet. Let people know what the problem is, what the real problem is. And stop looking to government. Stop looking to the White House to fix our problem. But look to the houses of the inhabitants of the land and say, you need to get on your knees and pray and ask God for forgiveness. For we have trusted in the things of this world more than the one who has made the world. We have forgotten God. We have walked away from him. We have enjoyed his prosperity. We have enjoyed his blessing and we have turned our face from him and we are in blatant, um, immoral, rebellious sin before him. And except we repent, we will, we will hear the words, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the almighty shall it come. So be encouraged, first of all, that God loves us and that he, he's calling us to this place. But secondly, that he wants to use you as a sounding trumpet to blow and to, uh, to awaken and announce uh, to the people that we're in trouble if we don't turn to the Lord. So go forth today mildly in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be encouraged and share with all of those around the solution to our problem.